Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today we are going to continue with the Every Frame of Painting series. In this episode, we are going to study the uh, beautiful cinematography of Blade Runner 2049. So this movie is a 2017 film, and it's a sequel to the original Blade Runner. Comment below if you have seen this movie or maybe have seen the original. This film is one of the movies that was an inspiration for this series. As soon as I saw it, I knew that the photography, and the cinematography, the lighting, the colors was absolutely gorgeous. I knew that I would one day have to sit down and, you know, truly appreciate it and do some studies from this film. So, um, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful works of cinematography. There's a lot of big heavy hitters, big names in film cinematography uh, that worked on this. And before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free Insiders Club. Insiders Club members get first access to these weekly live streams. And you also get access to other live events. And you get discounts on courses and programs, along with access to free lessons and other free content available only to subscribers. So all you have to do is go to www drawwithchris.com and there you can enter your email and you'll be good to go. If you're watching live on replay, comment below. Let me know where are you located? What time is it for you? I am currently in Thailand. So thank you for being here. Now this film Blade Runner 2049 was directed by Denis Villeneuve and the cinematographer is Roger Deakin. So both of these names should be familiar to anyone who uh, watches a lot of movies. Denis is just one of the giants of modern Hollywood. He's put out hit after hit after hit. He recently did the new Dune, 2021 Dune, was his uh, biggest hit, Arrival, among many, many of his great films. And all of his films have this beautiful visual look. So he is a very visual cinematographer. He's a very artistic, so all of his films just are absolutely beautiful to look at, to watch. And of course, uh, Roger Deakins, any film buff or anyone who's watched movies knows Roger Deakins. He's an award-winning cinematographer. He's arguably the most famous cinematographer working right now in the world. So he has many, many, many wonderful hits, many wonderful projects, many wonderful films. Some of his recent credits include 1917, which is a World War II film, Skyfall, a James Bond film, and Sicario, just to name a few of his long list of film credits. And before we begin, let's just quickly take a look at some frames here to appreciate this film. This shot here is just one of the most gorgeous shots and locations in the movie. And there's a lot of monochrome that happens in the film, which is so wonderful. Clearly, this scene here has a warm yellow, orange monochrome warmth to it. Really wonderful. And this film is set... In the near future, it's a bit of a dystopian type of film. So there's a lot of grays and a lot of, you know, dust and dirt. You know, things aren't very colorful at all in this world. It's kind of a gray, muted, a little, little bit of a depressing <laughs> kind of world. You can see in this frame just a gorgeous, gorgeous wide shot of the world. There's some absolutely stunning wide shots that give you a sense of the environment. And you can just see the beautiful textures and the beautiful subtle colors and grays in this film. It's the textures that really stand out to me and the way that the colors and the visuals really bring you into the world and make the whole film and the whole world very believable. This frame here is uh, one of the iconic shots of the film. The film is a bit of a kind of arid and dusty and dry kind of uh, world. You know, it doesn't look like there's much sunshine, not much vegetation, you know, not a lot of green, just dusty and, you know, very dystopian, very war-torn. But it's, uh, it really adds to the story as well, because the world feels a bit hostile and looks like a place you don't, you don't really want to be, you don't really want to live. So it kind of helps you to um, really get attached to the characters. So that's a wonderful skill that the director, Denis Villeneuve, has he's the, the, the ability to um, emphasize the characters in the story with his beautiful visuals and his beautiful worlds and his beautiful landscapes like this. Okay, our first example here is a bit of a, it's a simple one. Just a um, little bit of a background in a cool car. 
So I'm going to start by just sketching some of the shapes and kind of where I'm at here. And this part is not necessary, but you can um, you can just start by blocking in the uh, the shapes. But I just like I like to draw things out just the way I think, and it just gives me a nice sense of where I'm at. And let's see. So this scene is a very powerful scene, and this tree is quite important in this movie. The um, uh, you know, it's um, set in the future, and the world is a bit dusty like this and barren sort of a dystopia type of world it's a really cool world and it's kind of where the original original Blade Runner was kind of set in that world too Such a cool <laughs> flying car. Must have been a lot of fun to work on for the uh, industrial design people. Well, I don't have to get it perfect. I just need something there. Because um, I'm more about the color right now, so I will probably mess up the car quite a bit. So all you car enthusiast people, forget, try to forgive me here. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Now I'm going to uh, fill with the dominant color, which is the sky. So let's see, it's a greeny gray, light greeny gray. Let's try this. It's close. Let me block in some other things so I have some context, like the ground, the, uh, the tree, the car. What I'll do is I'll block in these shapes and just kind of put in some, you know, a little bit of a placeholder color. And then we'll, uh, we'll fine tune them all together because I think that's helpful. Because that's how color works. Color is a, um, you know, it's more of a, a symphony than one instrument. Well, the ground has gradation and texture, so it's going to take, um, 
It's going to take more than one flat shape to get that right. But that's okay. We can start now. I think, um, oh, I don't want to give it away. But there's a very, uh, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to give away the, the moment that's happening here. There's a, this is an important story moment. And the tree has quite a bit of significance in the story. The tree also has some gradation. It's darker than the sky. I'm going to uh, just fix the drawing of the tree a little bit. Okay. Character and the car. The scene is uh, very gray, as you can see. And the gray scenes, although on the surface they look simple, well, they are simple, but when you uh, try to capture the relationships between the grays, that's when it gets really, really interesting. It gets really challenging. You have to um, know your stuff a little bit. Oh, it was, a, it was my guess. For the color of the car, it was pretty close. It's not super important, but it's it is helpful to get the uh, the cutout shapes of this car. Make sure that we know that it it does have <laughs> windows and things, and it does help with the color a little bit. But I'm not so much about the detail. It looks like a detail pass, but it's really. Uh, um, just getting the shape right so we can do the color corrections, what I'm trying to do here. Got to get the shape right first. So that's car. And the character is pretty close in um, color and value. He is the darkest thing here. So I got to keep that in mind. So he's darker than the car, more saturated, and a little bit greener than the car. He's warmer than the car. Oh, that's pretty close. Wow, I got lucky. 
Let me, uh, I'm going to put him, uh, put the tree in front of him. Where's the tree? And let me just get his shape a little bit. The shape is fine for what we're doing for this color study, but I just, you know, you know, you know. My background is in figure drawing and realistic drawing, so I gotta make sure the car, uh, the, <laughs> the character looks decent. It's just, just for me. The shape is good, the color is good. Man, there's a tangent there. Okay, let's do the sky. So for sure the sky is too blue and it does have a gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at kind of this field right here. So it's a bit of a greeny. It needs to be more green. Okay, getting getting there. I think value-wise it's pretty close. More saturated? No. Yeah, that's pretty close. And then there's a big, well, there's a couple gradients. There's one top to bottom, obviously. Let's try that. So I'm going to color pick the sky. I'm going to go brighter and pretty yellow. Let's see what that looks like. Looks nice. Oh, that looks better. In the middle, there's a big puffy, like, cloud kind of thing. Oh, it's too bright, uh, too, too dark. Let me see if I can... Um, too saturated. <laughs> Whoops, that brush has a texture in it. Okay, that, that's better. So you see the relationship is a lot better. So it's too gray and desaturated right now. But the colors are pretty close to what I need. Okay, so it needs to go darker and a bit more. More yellow. Yeah, that is pretty close right there. It's pretty close. Let me see if I can get, there's a bit of a gradient from the top down. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. This side could use some help, but I'm just going to move forward. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time here. Okay, let's get the mountains to read. So clearly there's a gradation happening there, top to bottom, and bottom to top. Let's see, make sure my, okay. Oh, that looks nice. Let me see if I can drop the opacity a little bit. Yeah, it's looking good. So now we got to get the bottom part to read. Oh, man. 
There's a couple ways to do this. You need some texture. Let me just grab a textury kind of brush and somewhere. There you go. Nice uh, multi-purpose texture. So the the ground is is a bit warmer, right, than what I have. So let's just do that. The value is pretty close. So I'm just gonna add some some warmth, and it's already looking better. Yeah, that's a pretty good color. And then I'm gonna add another pass of that color but darker and a bit more gray and blue let's see let's just see what that does yeah that's pretty it's pretty good choice it's pretty good choice right there we're gonna try dissolve I'm gonna color pick the car I like the color of the car. And let's see if I can do a dissolve. Oh, that looks great. Drop the opacity a bit. See how dirty and dusty that looks? That's perfect. That's exactly what I was after here. And then... Um, a little bit of like this little patch in front of the tree. So I'll use a circular dissolve for that. Let's see. What color is that? Let's try the car again and see if I can. I think it's going to be, needs to be darker. Oh, yeah. Value wise, it's pretty good. So I just made a little circular dissolve kind of thing to try to get that little patch in front of the tree. And then I can transform my, my work, of course. Drop the opacity. Yeah, you know, it's it's close. Let me play with it, see if it should be brighter or warmer. No, brighter, nope. Darker, yeah, a little bit. More saturated. Should be warmer. Meaning more green, more blue, no. Yeah, actually, a little bit more blue is fine. And then, um, I raise some of that a little bit here. So that looks pretty good. I think um, I'm okay with the ground. Next layer is the car. The car is pretty, I'm um, pretty close. pretty close value wise and color wise so I'm going to see if I can well let's put in some gradients in the car it's definitely one bottom to top right Oh, that looks good. Let's see. Should it be should it be a little bit more saturated. It's a little too green. Yeah. And a little bit darker. Let's try that. And see if we can change the shape of it a little bit. Yep. That's looking good. And then bottom top. Let's just drop in the the uh Oh yeah, that looks looking good right there. So it's a nice gradient. Let's see if it can be a little bit brighter. A little bit more saturated. I just color picked the tree. I'm kind of working back to front. Yeah, that looks okay. Yeah, it looks okay. And then I'm going to try to get some of the darks in the... So darker... For sure. A little bit more saturated, a little bit bluer. Let's see. Let's try that. Could be wrong. Just a guess. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm trying to get the darks out the car. And again, probably going to screw up the drawing a little bit. So.
And again, I'm not looking at the detail. I mean, I am, but uh, I'm not trying to get detail. What I'm just looking at is like these little shapes of dark car color. <laughs> Let's try to uh, do my best to make them read. There's a little bit of... Uh, I want some of that that texture on the door. There it is. That looks pretty good. It's darker and has a bit of texture. Okay. So this is the car. No, this is the car. What I'm going to do is it needs... Some of it needs to be darker than other parts of it. Color-wise, it's pretty good. Like here, 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 underneath here, maybe inside the door a little bit. And that's really it. Quickly do some of the top plane highlights. Well, they're not really highlights, but they're the top plane. Oh my God, drawing's way off. Okay, it's too green. It's too dark. I color picked the uh, some color from the background. I think. There. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it's very loose and quick and very sloppy, but it's a it's a nice uh, start. A nice block in. Okay, I think that's as far as I'm going to go in the car. Next is our main character. Uh, the main character, yeah. Let's do the character and then the tree. So he's pretty straightforward. The base color that I have is nice. Let's see if he has some gradations. He does. Kind of inside out. So I'm going to take my uh, gradient here. I'm going to take the uh, reflective ones inside out. Uh, he's a bit more saturated and nah, green. Let's try that. Okay, that looks pretty pretty good, I guess. Oops, lost it. He has um top down he's of course he's getting some of the sky and uh, so I just picked a just a random kind of orange I know it's not even close to being correct. Just stay with me for a second here. And then, um, way too saturated. Yes, saturation is better. Yes, much better. <laughs> Look at that. It's already getting better. Uh, make it a little darker. Yeah, I like that. 
obviously the hand. His uh, hair is pretty dark. Some of these darks are too, they're too uh, warm. You see how warm they are? They're too bright too. Need to be desaturated, a little bit more green. Let's see what color it is. Okay, that's good. Okay, I think that's a good up oh, for the character. And then let's do the tree and then, um, tree so the tree has some gradation oh, da, 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 from the let's try left to right and um ooh, ooh, that's nice too saturated Temperature is pretty good. Oh, no, it's not. It's too warm. It needs to be like a really gray, yes, a gray yellow green. If there is such a thing. I can't see there. Okay, so it's there. Yeah, I think that's a good color. The, the, um, it's, it's close. It's not quite there. Let me try on the on this over here on this side. Yeah, it's 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 close. Mm. I think what needs to happen is it needs to mix with the uh, the tree properly so you can see it and let me try that texture brush again there you go so that same color if you mix it see what happens it might let's see and then oh, okay it's a little better I just color pick the background color in the background I think the relationship wise is better And then some of the darks in the tree. Just color pick the car. It's pretty close to the car. Just a little texture brush I made here. Okay, it's too bright, obviously. Yeah, oh, it's better. The texture is a little weird, but... It's definitely better. It needs to be darker and more, more. Yeah, I think that's a good. Uh, 
and then uh, the little lines, obviously. Let's see if we can get those in there. And um, again, color pick the uh, the car. Oh yeah, that's a nice, nice dark for the little lines in the tree. And then, um, let's do the uh, pole thingy. I'm going to color pick the character, the dark of the character. And then, um, my f initial guess right here is pretty close, so I'm just going to, oops. I'm going to leave it as this. I don't want to spend oh, all this time on the on a piece of wire. All right, so I think this is a nice stopping point. Still, you know, obviously got a lot of details to work out and edges and form. It's a cast shadow of the car. I can quickly do that. But I think um, for, this, um, for this particular study, we are good stopping point as a color study. I think it's pretty successful. So here's our second example. We start with a drawing, try to go through this quickly. You see, I'm going to have to rush the drawing. <laughs> oh, man. And let's see what I can do here. Beautiful uh, costume design. I can just look at that fabric and just go, wow. I can imagine um, gorgeous fabric. And, you know, there's so many screens to pick from in Blade Runner. It's one of those movies that lives up to the title every frame of painting the literally every every frame every shot is just is glorious but i really wanted to draw this actress this character i forgot the actress name but she's playing uh, uh, an android that's part of the uh the world of blade runner if you haven't seen any of the blade runners they um in their world, they have these realistic android creatures. And in this movie, um, this android is, um, she's like the main android of the main villain character or whatever. And um, she is just absolutely terrifying. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to give it away, but uh, I just love the way they light her. They light her and they make her look so cold. And that's really what, when I look at this frame, I, I feel cold. I literally, my body temperature is kind of dropping a little bit because the background is ice cold. The lighting is ice cold. Her expression is icy cold. I mean, she got a little, little tiny little smile, but uh, overall, she's just really icy cold.
Okay, so really we have two main shapes. We have the background and the character. So the background is real easy. I'm just going to... Uh, well, actually, I should drop in the character because the background is so dark. I'm going to drop in a flat for the character. Now this one... I'm just going to drop in a, uh, an average of her. She's, so she's a human being with a white, creamy white thing. So I'm just going to drop in a light pink. There you go. Just I just need something there so I can do this and play with the background. So the background, I'm looking at this zone right here because this is really dark and murky on her left, uh, on the screen's left. So just kind of look in this zone and try to try to guess the average of what that is. So desaturated. Okay, so that's pretty close. Right now I'm pretty close. Uh, just going to keep going. Really, I need the darks for it to make sense. So that's pretty close. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, it's darks I made previously. So now uh, I'm going to get the darks, and I'm just going to make my best guess. To me, it feels, I'm not, don't color pick, please. To me, it feels blue. So a cool, dark gray. So I'm just going to guess at a cool, dark gray. Use my gradient tool, and you don't have to use gradient tool. You can use airbrush. And just drop it in. OK, so clearly, now we have something to compare. We can look at the original, look at ours. So clearly, mine is way too saturated, way too bright. It needs to go darker. And OK, saturation is not bad, actually. So as you go darker, saturation matters less. So actually. This kind of purple blue that I have was a good guess temperature wise, I just needed some value. Now we're going to go left to right. Left to right, I'm just going to pick, color pick a, a dark again gradation tool. So that's pretty close. It's pretty close. I'm in the ballpark. Now I know I need to adjust this color a little bit. What I'm going to do is. Um, Let's drop this down. Too bright, too green, too saturated. So you see how look how green it looks. So that means I need to move towards blue. Okay. Okay. Getting better, right? Moving it towards blue away from green. Getting better. I think that was a good place. Let's go darker a little bit. I want to add a gradient right to left now. Right to left. Let's see. I'm just going to color pick the one over here. I already established. Okay, that's pretty pretty close. I think I think it's pretty close. I'm going to move on. I don't want to spend too much time with the background. What I need now is the character. Let's do that. All right, the character got three shapes. I'm sorry, I'm going to go through quickly because um, for the sake of time, character has three main shapes: fabric or clothing, skin, hair. So what I'm going to do, and let me adjust this a little bit, clothing, skin, and hair. So I'm going to separate those into three objects, three layer, three hard edge layers that I can make masks with. Let's, let's separate. Because what I want is... the fabric, her costume. I want to get that color. That color is really important, actually. In a lot of ways, her costume is sort of like a character. OK, so I got that. Now I can do, oops. There we go. So to me, it's sort of a creamy, greeny white. OK, it's close enough, close for now. Now I need uh, hair. And again, if you're following along, if you're doing this exercise at home, 
Please uh, take your time. Don't rush the shapes, don't rush the color notes. So what's her hair? It's a dark brown. So I'm just going to go dark brown. That's pretty close for now. Let's see. Her skin is pretty close. Let me try to get the fabric. So the fabric has interesting little shadow shapes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color pick. This is the color of the fabric that I, it's my best guess. I'm gonna make a bit of a shadow tone now. So it needs to be darker. A Little bit more saturated and change to, to maybe possibly a, a little bit more blue. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks pretty close. So this is just is just my best guess. I got lucky. That looks pretty good. If we look at the relationship, don't look at the shadow in isolation. Look look at it compared to the skin and to the rest of the fabric. It's pretty close to relationship, right? Colors about relationships. Mine's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. I mean, there's subtleties to it, but I think it's uh, it's pretty good. It's it's good enough to move forward. Uh, how about that? Because I really <laughs> I want to, you know, like I keep saying, I don't want to take forever. Next, uh, their skin. So her skin. Let's drop in some gradations on her skin before. I do the shadow shape. So her skin is obviously not this flat pink. This pink is close, right? If you look at the zone around her nose, which is the light. So right now she's being lit by ambient overhead. It's basically like an office environment. There's a bunch of lights everywhere. So it's kind of producing sort of ambient overhead light. So right here is sort of where the halftone planes are, right here. So if you look at mine, it's pretty close. So let's get the relationship. So obviously, ambient overhead, we know, we know, we know, we know. If you watch any of my videos, you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to shade the egg. I'm going to add gradients, left to right, da, 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 egg, 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 fall off. And if you don't, if you're new, welcome. Glad you're here. I have at least hundreds of hours of head drawing and shading stuff stuff you can go through. <laughs> so um, this is a color study, but uh, obviously um, good painting philosophy is grounded in good drawing. So I'm basically drawing right now, just adding little splashes and notes. Just little notes, and I think uh, because I have so much portrait mileage, I've drawn thousands and thousands and thousands of these, you know. <laughs> and maybe if you're watching at home, you, you do too. This part, to me, goes way faster than uh, like the environment stuff we did in the first example, uh, uh, the building and <laughs> stuff. It takes me so long. And uh, let's get her lips in there. That's really nice. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to move on to her hair real quick. I need to address the hair. So just like the skin, the hair has its own gradations, color movements, temperature shifts, everything. At first, I don't like the shape. The shape is really ugly. I have to adjust the shape a little bit. It's very like blocky, mechanical. I want to add some of these little interesting openings and details and things. And again, you 
you can take your time when you draw these shapes. And I would, if I was doing these at home or off camera, when I do these off camera, I really take my time, obviously. In fact, I'm probably going to do one, a one to one. That's what I'd like to do one of these days. I'm going to do a, f a full copy on on a stream so you could see the whole thing if, if you're interested it's going to take at least two hours i'm guessing all right hair so hair's got some interesting things right we got some little notes of brown here little notes of brown Actually, the brown that I have is pretty close to that, and it's got little little highlights here. So first, let's get the highlights. What I'm going to do is I'm going to color pick the background right here and just drop it in. Let's see how it works. It looks okay, right? Right. If we look up, up top, the relationship of the little top plane of the hair it looks okay. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to add. Now I'm going to add the dark. Yeah, that looks pretty good too. I just color picked the dark that I already made for the background, dropped it in her hair. It looks okay. It's too, it's a little too too desaturated. Maybe it could use some brown, but it looks okay. And now some of these lighter, right, these more saturated, warmer streaks in her hair are starting to make sense. And that's here. So that's on a layer, so I can adjust it. One is having a little difficulty now with that one. So the shadow, let me see if I can bring it back to a warm. Oh, that looks looking better. So that looks pretty good. Now the highlight is a little off now. <laughs> you see how relative color, once I change one color, they all kind of affect each other. So that's um, what's happening here. OK, so that's pretty close. It's enough for me to move forward because I really want to get her skin. Oh, I don't like the shape of the highlights. Ugly, it's really bothering me. <laughs> I try not to spend too much time in detail. OK, where's her skin? Where's her skin? OK, it's here. It's here. Okay, so I merged all the notes. Now um, I've got her skin on a layer. What I'm going to do is um, block in her uh, eye, the dark shapes in her eye. And I'm just going to color pick the brown in the hair. Just, just give me something to start with, and it's totally wrong. It's totally not going to work. And I'm looking at the dark shapes because um, once I have these kind of darks, I'll be more able to. Okay, this brush is not cooperating. Once I have the darks, I'll be able to better gauge the lights and then go back to the, the mids of so the general skin tone in general. And really the dark eye shapes, underplane of her nose. She has a very interesting nose shape. The lip. This brush is hideous. What is going on here? Underplane of the lip. Can even do the 
underplane of the uh, the head, the shadow on the neck. Let me just correct these shapes. These shapes are so ugly. They're really bothering me. There's no way I can get any decent drawing here. I don't really want to, but I just don't want it to be ugly. <laughs> It'll be as, as incomplete as it's looking now. All right, uh, I'm just gonna go through the shapes as best as I can. Oh, they're so ugly. I, um, I've drawn this character before. When I first saw the movie, I started uh, doing some Blade Runner inspired drawings and um, she is so much fun to draw. And it's just, just a one, and this character is just a, just a, such a cool character. I want to do her justice, but I can't, you know, I got to rush the drawing. Obviously, I can't spend two hours on this. But if you haven't seen it, I would definitely uh, <laughs> hope you, hope you uh, check out this movie. And uh, you'll see, maybe you'll appreciate this character as much as, as I do. Okay, the drawing's really ugly, but I have to move forward. I can't spend two hours on it. Her lip shape is so cool. Okay, so I got the darks on one layer. I'm going to do the, the shadow of her skin too under here, just so I have that. It's an important note to have. I just love how uh, they light this character. You know, she's an android, so obviously she's, you know, the, the metaphor is they're, they're cold, they're, they're ice cold, and she's always lit to be really cold. Every scene she's in, she says, icy, icy, cold lighting, like in this one. So it's just very haunting. And it's a very, just a brilliant and intelligent use of color and lighting. Trying to get the overall neck kind of in the right value range first, and then in the right temperature, make sure it's uh so it is sort of a pinky warm gray. That's pretty close. I'm in the ballpark. Obviously, there's gradations in the neck. But um let me go back to the darks now. Where are the darks? All right, so got the darks on a layer. Um, let's let's just go through these. So underplane of the nose, I just I just color picked the shadow tone of her neck. That's pretty close. So I'm going to try that underplane of her chin. That's pretty pretty close as well. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to move on from there. Let's do the lip. The lip is. I'm just going to make a guess. Okay, that's it's it's close, but it's too candy, right? It's too saturated. It needs too pink. It needs to be warmer, more orange, a little bit, a little brighter. I think, yeah, and a little less saturated. Okay, that's pretty close. I can move forward. The ear. So the ear is roughly the same color as the. the lip. So I'm just going to drop it in just to get in the ballpark. Obviously, I can refine it later. And actually, the underplane of her eyes, eyelid, her lower eyelid lid thing, a little complex there. And then uh, she has gradations in her, the darks of her eyes. 
of all sorts of gradations. So let's do the best we can there. I'm going to color pick. I'm going to color pick the shadow of her skin, of her neck there, and to see how that looks. See, it's already starting to take shape and it's starting to make sense. I'm just trying to get the impression, really. Let me see if I can get the darks in her eyes. I color picked the dark in the background. So I believe she has, well, she's wearing makeup. So it'll probably make her, some of the darks in her eyes appear blue. So I think this was a good choice. And I believe she has like greeny brown eyes. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's good enough for me to move forward. So what I'd like to do now is just get the last. So these are the darks. I'm going to get more of the notes in the skin. So that's on the layer below. I think um, one of them is the most important notes are the underplanes of her cheeks, the keystone plane. The, her eye has an icy blue. So I think, um, I can't confirm this, but that might have been picked out in post-production. Because again, part of what makes this character so important and part of the story of this frame is that she is an icy, cold, I guess she's technically a villain. So she's an ice cold villain. So her eyes have to be icy cold too. So I'm gonna bring them back to blue. So that's that's a good enough. Of course, it could use some refinement. I'm not going to. Down underplane of her cheeks. I'm just gonna make a guess at this kind of tone. Okay, it's not dark enough. It's not gray enough, but it's close. And the, the cheek on the left has a different underplane under plain color and temperature than the cheek on the right. Uh, so I'm just gonna just gonna kind of drop in this general tone and uh, make my adjustments there once I have it blocked in. Yeah, I think value-wise, it's okay. It's a little too bright. There it is. And it was, temperature was a little off. So I feel pretty good about these notes. Now I'm going to uh, sculpt up the nose a little bit. That was a little flat. The eyes as well. I'm going to bring some of these tones back into the eye, into the hair. <laughs> Here, so bright. Her lip is a little off. And uh, the last note I want before I move on is to get the ice cold light. So she's really lit by this cold, cold ambient light in the room. And uh, I wanna make sure those notes are there. So that means just a really 
quick quick notes on the top planes of forms and all i did was color pick the fabric because the fabric is it's pretty bright so right now i'm looking at it and it's pretty close temperature wise it's pretty close i'm going to play with it now just to see if i'm in the right should it be d darker yeah a little bit a little bit darker more saturated no well that's not too bad actually should it be change the temperature more pink no more pink here no more yellow more yellow more yellow more yellow it's going to green no it's actually right around where i was it's pretty pretty good oh let me get those earrings or at least that one earring and we'll call it a day so that earring is a is a blue i'm just going to guess drop it in it should be turquoise green blue And the earring needs a little bit of context. Okay, that's <laughs> oh the inside of her jacket. Um, where is that? Okay, inside of her jacket. Real quick, this will be the last note. Is right here. And that's that's pretty close. I think that's good enough to move forward. All right. So that was a very quick and dirty and rushed color study with a gorgeous head in it. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. All right. One of the iconic scenes in this movie. Even if you haven't seen the movie, you've probably seen a lot of images from the movie. And this is one of the iconic scenes. So this is the main character played by Ryan Gosling. And he um, he's having a rough day. Let's just put it. <laughs> he's having a rough, rough day, obviously. A rough day. So this is just one of those iconic moments story-wise. And visually, it's just um, a stunning scene. What he's looking at. He's looking at a giant hologram of a of a pink girl <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie and it's just a glorious glorious scene glorious image really really cool same image it's in the thumbnail if you do any google search for blade runner 2049 <laughs> you will see that exact imagery man this drawing is terrible jesus this drawing is terrible And uh, oh my god, this likeness is awful. Oh, it's awful. I think the eyes are too low, too high. 
Okay, that's better. <laughs> that helped a little bit. I knew um, eventually I would have to include a Denis Villeneuve movie. He's such a such a wonderful visual filmmaker, director. And there's so many to choose from. I was debating between this and Dune, Dune, uh, 2021 Dune, uh, which is also has glorious visuals, but. Uh, I think this one is just a little bit more variety in color than um, than doing. Okay, let's move forward here. Okay, so another portrait, basically, just background and. Uh, character and interesting background. All right, I'm just going to drop in a purple. Purpley pink. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Oh. And so the background is a bunch of colors we can see, but what is it mostly? What is the dominant color in the background? It's sort of this dark purpley gray purpleyness with some interesting gradations. So it's it's a bunch of stuff. So I'm just gonna drop in one color. As we know, none of these colors work in isolation. We have to. Look at them as a whole. I'm, I'm just, whew, I'm going to drop it in because I know I really can't make any decision until I get, well, let's get, I think he's standing on a platform. So there's a clear, you, you guys see that? There's a clear ground plane here. I think that's what this is. This is a platform with some railing. I believe that's what I'm looking at. I, I don't have no idea. I could be wrong. But that's what I see for now. And it definitely divides the color quadrants. So you guys see, really, I see three main color quadrants. I see this little chunk here, which is, I think is ground plane, this chunk to his right, to our right, his left, and this little chunk here, which is a lot brighter. So I'm going to combine these two chunks into one creature, one layer, one thing. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Just going to drop in something. Okay, so relationship-wise, these are pretty close. I'm trying to think about what what to do first. Let me use some gradient tool now. Trying to get that glow behind him. It's, it should be green, right? It's clearly a greeny. Okay, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. And there's a little glowy thing as well, right there, a little bright spot.
All right. That green needs to be a little bit more yellow. I think in general, there's like a yellow glow that's happening behind that area. Let me just color pick that I just made. Okay, that is pretty close. It's too bright. Maybe a little bit more, ooh, less saturated, but a little darker. Okay, that's pretty close. It needs some of the darks and other things. Just try to go quickly, sorry. I know, I wanna to get to the character too, but I gotta make sure that this background is is decent so okay okay i'm gonna just take my best guess it's um it's definitely so i'm looking here don't color pick i'm looking here uh it's a greeny dark gray blue greeny dark gray, greeny dark gray blue how about that greeny, dark gray, blue? And let's try it. Let's try that. It's my best guess. Try it. Okay, it's close. Okay, I'm close now. I'm much happier than that. So this should be a little bit darker. Okay, and I I think that's good enough to move on. <laughs> I really need to move on to the character, the ground plane now. We know it's darker. And the edge is way too hard. Okay, just use a quick motion blur. And uh, I forgot that how important the edge was. Because if I make the edge too hard, it kills the effect of uh, what I'm trying to do here. Okay, anyway, I kind of made a mistake with the um, with the layer orders, and I, I merged I merged a bunch of things that I shouldn't have, but uh, but anyway, that is a, a technique thing. That's not a color thing. Color wise, we are pretty good. i'm I'm about sixty percent happy <laughs> with what we have. it's It's as good as I can get in the time that I have. All right, let's do the character, finally. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, right. So I see really one, two, three, four main things that need to be accounted for. One is his skin, his hair, his outfit, and the Band-Aid. The Band-Aid is actually a part of the story. It's definitely a part of the frame, definitely a part of the uh, part of uh, our work here. So what I'm gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna put his hair and the jacket all on one layer. How am I gonna do that? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate his skin on its own layer. Let's just start there. Let's just start, start, start somewhere. What I'm doing is I'm I'm trying to think of my layers a couple steps ahead. You know what what I want to be a mask, what I want to be its own layer, and uh, because his the shadow on his face obviously is very dark and can be grouped value wise. It does group.
Look at that. Just turn down the, the dark. It is really dark, actually. It's almost black. It actually does go to black. If you look at the area behind his ear, it's pretty damn black. And it's going to be more of a blue black. A purple blue black. There it is. That is pretty close. That is pretty close. It's not perfect. It needs some notes. And it's a little too saturated, actually. Let me uh, drop it down. Okay, so that's pretty close. I'm going to do his um, hair now, uh, skin. His skin and his beard. So I think skin is, as is pink, this was just a guess. But as a pink, it's pretty close. It's obviously way too bright. So let's just, let's just darken it up. But as a pink, Temperature wise, it's pretty close. Okay, that looks better. I made it a little more warm pink. And let me erase the shape a little bit. What I'm going to do is get some of the notes on the jacket. It's pretty important. So his jacket is like a is like a gray dark brown, but he's being lit by why his skin is pink is he's there's a big, big pink light. It's a it's a hologram of the of the like I mentioned earlier. It's a hologram of the chick of the of an android that you could buy. Oh, it's not an android. It's like a it's a v it's a VR girlfriend that you can buy. AI an AI girlfriend. That's what he's looking at. He's looking at a giant hologram of an AI girlfriend. If that makes any sense. If you haven't seen the movie, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so those notes really helped. So now I needed those notes so I can judge his skin. And actually his hair can use some of this as well. Now, um, okay, I feel pretty good about that. I'm going to merge that. Now we had a skin, so we know just like, well, let's wait, let's do the band-aid. I'm gonna put the band-aid on a separate layer above the skin first. Just kind of cut it out with a hard edge mask. Band-aid is a big part of this of the scene. It's just really uh It's, it's it's a great scene, a lot of story-wise, a lot of impact here. So I got the band-aid, just gonna make it a brighter pinker, maybe slightly cooler version of itself. And that's pretty close. That's pretty close. I just need I just need it there so I can get the gradations on the skin. All right, we know just like what we saw earlier. We know, we know, we know what's coming next. Gradation time. So he is being lit, right upper left. Well, frontal. It's it's he's being lit frontal light. So, but because of the position of his head and the camera, we are seeing the side plane. So so under planes and side planes are going to get darker. Let's do that. So I color picked. The base that I have, I'm just going to go darker and I'm going to go warmer. Let's see what that does. Could be wrong. Okay, it's pretty, it's, that was a good guess. So it's a bit darker and warmer. Right now, I'm just kind of glazing some notes, I'm not, I'm not rendering at all. I'm just kind of glazing, glazing, glazing. Just putting in a wash, right? A watercolor wash. A glaze, a note, a wash. Um, he has some really saturated reds. I believe, yeah, he is. He's coated in blood. So it's coated in blood. He's having a bad day. I think this color note was was a good choice. He has some blues in him. The thing he's looking at is 
is a little bit blue as well. It's not just pink. So there's a bit, oh, that looks great. You see that? I just kind of guessed at this blue and I'm like lightly washing it in, kind of glazing it in and it's working great. You guys see that? So now it's looking nice. I'm happy with that note. Let's see if I can uh, maybe make it better. All right, so we got the notes, um, get the darks. So he has some darks. The blood is important. Let me get the blood. <laughs> he has blood dripping on his face, all over his face. So that's kind of an important note. And obviously the color I'm using now is just totally wrong. It's all over the place, but let's see if we can just make it more saturated. Okay, it's it's getting better. Okay, it's pretty close. Close enough for me to move on. Can't spend too much time on the shape of the little blood splatters and things. Although I would like to, I'm not going to. Let's look at the darks. All right, I'm going to color pick the darks in his hair and then uh, put that in his beard and mustache. It should be warmer. Definitely warmer down here. I'm also going to group it with the darks in his ear. Why not? So it's too blue, it needs to be warmer. It needs to be more red, specifically red. And much, much darker. So that's a nice blood red. Oh, that works really nice. That is working nicely now. It's a little too blood red. I'm gonna bring it back to purple red. Okay, that looks great. I'm happy with that note. Let me get the blue, blue eyes. Well, let's get the white of his eye, uh, which is actually a pink. Let's see if I can get that note correct. So this is my guess, my best guess at the notes, color note of his eye. And that's pretty close. It's a little too, should be more pink, I think. More pink, less green. Okay, more pink. It's pretty close. What I need now is obviously the blue of his eyes to make a full judgment. I'm gonna color, just drop in any old blue. This I color picked a blue from the background. It's a blue green, so his eyes, Looks blue, blue, right? Looks like, like, a, like a candy blue, a unnatural blue, which it is, because he's being lit by an artificial light. So his eyes, there it is. Okay, so the shape is all ugly and messed up, but we're pretty close. Let's do the band aid, and I really think um, probably going way over time. Let's do the band aid real quick, and then we can call it a day. Ah, this is so much fun. I'm like, I really want to do, um, 
I want to do these frames justice, but I just don't have time. Okay, though, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> that was, uh, I tried to, oh, I tried to put a little bit of blue in the band aid. It doesn't look right at all. Okay, that doesn't look right at all. Why did I do that? <laughs> so the base color, the band aid is, is wrong. This needs to be more purple. And a little bit darker. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, so now I'm going to color pick some colors just already established. And uh, let's see how that goes. Okay. So that's that could be better. <laughs> little shadow plane. That's clearly too gray, right? If we look at we look at the the image to ours. It's too too gray, too blue. It needs to be more saturated and more pink. It needs to be purple, pink purple, kind of like his skin. Okay, so that's close. And he's a little more pink, I think, and a little darker. All right, that's close enough. Mm, needs to be a little darker. And um, I'm going to splash some of that blood on here, blood on here, on here. I'm going to color pick his face. There's a little bit of a highlight on the band aid, and it's not. It's actually blue. There it is. Because um, he's staring at a blue character, like I was saying. And the last thing is, let me just make sure his lips are I'm pretty much done here. I'm just trying to do the drawing some justice. I mean, it's such a such an iconic movie for me. I um, I don't want to do an ugly drawing and leave, leave it like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me uh, make sure this blood is dark enough. And can spend a lot more time <laughs> on the blood and things like that, but I'm not going to. I think this is a good, but a good um, stopping point here. Okay, obviously, um, I think the texture too is a big part of this. You know, this 
there's lots of beautiful and interesting textures here, which I'm not going to do. I don't have time for. The blood needs some work. The background need, needs some work, obviously. But I think the overall notes are there. You know, if you're doing this at home, clearly you have, you know, you know exactly what's next to do. Just keep refining your work, adding a little bit more detail, refining your shapes. But as far as the colored notes, we are in good shape. 